My name is Pam Kleinpeter. I'm the Library Director, and today I'm going to talk about how you use Primo and how you can use search filters to improve your search results. So I'm starting out at the library's website, and I'm starting out in the uh, Primo search box. So let's say that we're going to do a search for climate change. Right now, Primo is searching our catalog as well as um, most of the 70 different databases that we subscribe to. So Primo has given us a search results list, and we've got basically 1.7 million search results. So this is a combination of physical items, like books on the shelf, as well as online resources, such as articles, uh, reference entries, all kinds of different things. So we know that you are not going to go through all 1.7 million search results. No one has that kind of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use the Tweak Your Results on the right-hand side to quickly filter your search results to find the things that are uh, closer to what you're looking for. So under Availability, you're going to have some options. If you click on Held by Library, what this filter does is it gives you the things that are, for the most part, available physically in print in the library, whether it's a book or a government document or something else. So for example, you can see that this is a book about climate change from 2009. It tells you that it's at the College Drive Campus Library, it's in the book stacks, and then it gives you a number. So if you went to this number, on the shelf, that is where you would find this book. Uh, government documents have their own section, and most of the government documents um, are available online as well as in print. So this is only one filter. As you can see, it comes up here under active filters, and it has an X. So if I decided I wanted to switch or remove this filter, I can hit the X, and they're just as easy to take off as they are to add. The other filter that I might use would be available online. So this kind of does the opposite. It takes out all of the physical stuff that you would have to physically come to the library to access, and it gives you things that are available online. So if it has this available online link, you would click on it. It would give you some more information, and then it would give you links to where you can access it. This particular electronic book is available in two different online databases, so you can click on either one. It should take you to the same book. And then that gives you access to the book. If you wanted to, you could have one filter, you could have three filters, you could have seven filters. So let's stick with this available online filter, and let's see what else we can do with that. One of the other things that you might be interested in are peer-reviewed journals. So if your professor asks you to use scholarly resources, peer-reviewed resources, refereed resources, this might be of interest to you. So you can add that filter. And all of them are going to have this nice little purple icon. So even if you didn't use that particular filter, they would still be um, noted as peer-reviewed in your results list. 
one of the other things that you can do is you can use the subjects that are suggested. So if you were interested in climate change as it pertains to government policy, you can add that as a filter. And as you can see, that cut down our results list really fast. We only came up with one journal article with, that met all three of these criteria. So I want a little more um, variety. So I'm going to take that filter off. And that gives me back the other 450 some odd thousand. Let's say we were interested in temperature. So we added that filter and we went from 450 some odd thousand to 23,000 getting more and more narrow as we go along. And again, you can add one subject, you can have multiple subjects. I'm going to stick with just the one for right now. The other thing that you would want to take a look at is creation date. A good rule of thumb is to look at things from the past 10 years. That will change based on your subject. So there are things uh, particularly historical things, uh, things like the Civil War, things like World War II, uh, historical events that it doesn't really matter how old the article is, it's probably still relevant. Uh, there are other things, things like medicine, things like uh, research on COVID-19, where you would want the most up-to-date information available. Uh, a good rule of thumb is if you're not sure, keep it within the last five to 10 years. So I'm going to change the creation date range. I'm gonna make it 2015 to 2020, and I'm gonna hit refine. And so that's gonna take out anything that was in the list that was published prior to 2015. So now I'm down to 11,000 results and I've only added four filters. If you want, you can remember the filters, you can reset the filters. I'm gonna go ahead and hit reset. And you can do the same things with held by library as you could with available online. So we have 234 books that come up related to climate change. Again, you can sort by subject. Let's say renewable energy sources. Now we have six. If you, and this one actually is available both as a physical book from the library and online. So if it's available in both formats, it will give you access to both formats. Again, you can click and get more information. It'll usually at least give you the title, the author, the publication date. If the uh, cover image is available, it will give you that. Uh, I will point out that Primo will also give you citations that you can use at the uh, end of your paper in your Works Cited page. It defaults to MLA, and you can copy it and then paste it. Uh, we also have APA available, and your professor will tell you which citation format you're supposed to use, but it will flip back and forth between the two. Uh, Chicago and Harvard are not used as much, uh, particularly on this campus. So. Uh, Mostly you'll be dealing with either MLA or APA. And that is a quick look at how you can use uh, the filters in Primo to narrow down your search results. Uh, I hope that this was helpful. Uh, if you have additional questions, uh, please feel free to contact the library at AS, 
underscore library at kctcs.edu. Or if you have questions, you can use our new LibChat feature. If we are live and logged in, it'll say questions ask us now. You can fill out this form. You don't have to give us your information, but if we need to get back in touch with you, if something happens and we get disconnected, or if we need to give you additional follow-up information, it's nice to have that follow-up information, but you don't have to if you don't want to. And you can ask us questions this way uh, without even having to come to the library. Uh, when we are not logged in, this will say submit questions, and you can go ahead and ask us a question and then we will answer it the next time someone logs in, usually uh, the next day at the latest. Uh, you also have access to frequently asked questions that we've already answered, and you can look through those and see if you uh, can find the answer to your question that way. So happy searching, and please contact the library if you need additional help.